So I'm really excited. I finally got my machine set up as a controller for triggering clips and scenes in Ableton. Now I did this with a little bit of help from Facebook. So you can see here a thread on my Facebook page. So Christian Sieghart, you've been a big help mate. Um, your suggestion about loading up the older version of the controller editor is perfect okay so for the rest of you guys if you want to actually do this you need the controller editor you need the Ableton Live set up here it's a template this allows you to communicate with the machine to Ableton Live triggering those clips and scenes and I had the latest version that had come through the service center it didn't work for me so I went back to the old one on the recommendation of Christian and this is a page that I used so I went back to an early one um, I'll tell you which one I'm using precisely this is the 1.4.2. This is working great for me. I'm running with Mountain Lion, the latest update, Ableton Live 9 Beta. Okay, once again, Beta, make sure you understand that. So some of the features may be different on the new software. But my machine is now controlling my Ableton Live. This is wicked, all right? So a couple of steps I've got to remind you about. Um, firstly, you need to copy the files to the right location. So if you've downloaded the controller editor, you're going to get a folder like this. Okay, open it up and you've got template support files, Ableton 8. Okay, this is working fine for Live 9 as well. And these need to go into the application. This is, I'll show you how I did it with Ableton Live 9 Beta. So you right click, show package contents, come to contents, come to app resources. And inside here, we've got the MIDI remote script section and you just drag inside here, machine control it into that. And that's what I've got here. You'll see it as well as all the other possible controllers out there. There we go, machine controller. That's got to be inside that folder. So you're sort of going into the actual app itself. You can do the same with Ableton Live 8 as well. So that's what you need to do first. And then inside Live itself, go to preferences, come to the MIDI and sync section. Make sure your control surface input and output is all set to machine controller. Then also on the MIDI ports, You've got your input, set that to track and remote, and then output, you need to go track and remote as well. So that's it, we're set. So this is how it works, okay? So I've got the scene button selected, and now the numbers one through to 16 are triggering scenes one through to 16 over here. This is really nice, okay? So I've got a little composition here, another sneak preview of the forthcoming Enzyme Black album. This is another track I'm working on. You can see that I've got a selection of clips here, and I'm gonna trigger these on the fly just to see what kind of vibes come out. You know, this is a great thing about this approach. I didn't actually name the scenes on the right-hand side here. I just kept them the numbers because it's gonna be easier for the demonstration for you to see what's going on. So this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about, all right? So here we go, let's just uh, trigger scene number one. It's going to turn it down my side. So this is the uh, the intro if you want, and then a little extra clip triggering something here. So I'm going to dive in with the third scene. Here we go. So, so it's not mixed properly, by the way. It's just I've, I've snapped these things on the master here just as a quick fix. So we're on the third scene. And then we're going to go to the fourth it triggers on the next cycle and you can set when it's going to switch over which is great if you followed any of the other videos that I've done on Ableton on the Point Blank Online channel you'll see the whole concept of switching with legato which is great so you can switch clips without re-triggering from the very beginning so let's come through to five here we go so just some kind of evolving textures subtle variations moment it's quite sequential which is fine you know just going on this list and that's kind of the way I intended to structure it but at any point I could go back to the beginning and then come back so you can see it's got this kind of freeform thing so you're breaking free of the whole linear left to right kind of vibe you can just experiment and this of course could be recorded into the actual structure view. I mean, I, I've recorded some stuff in any way um, prior to this that I've done actually just by clicking the actual scenes manually. So see? There we go. So I've got like a new part of the tune. So the bass lines change, slightly different vibe. And then 
next one. It's all really rough at the moment. I mean, it's going to sound a lot better when the thing's finished. And then switching. So I like this, and I might come back to the previous one as an experiment. So here we go. Let it run, let it breathe for a bit, and then switch back. So I've got some other sections here. And maybe if I just do... So we're kind of taking it back to the beginning. I'm not sure if I do that on the final structure, but this is great, just experiment. So we can get back on track where we were. And then try some more. And uh, what else have I got? So I'm up to 16, which means that I now need to adjust this. I think this is the one. No, I've gone the wrong way. One of these takes me across. I forgot what it is. Okay. <laughs> so, I've got some stuff to learn, and um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just experiment with that, have a look around. Uh, see if I can work out how to go up and down. Maybe you guys have got some tips for me. So uh, yeah, I was just excited there. Just wanted to show you um, the machine controlling Ableton Live 9.